So this is it. This is the final talk. It seem it seems like it's a long day, and you've been all waiting for this talk now. Okay. So uh, your ID cards might not have my name because I'm a last minute replacement. Uh, actually, this talk was going to be presented by Samir Fegel. He is the founder of R2, the company where I work. And I'm a full stack engineer over there. Uh, we are JavaScript everything, server, backend, database everywhere. So uh, we, uh, we, we are a company who's building cool products in the financial inclusion space. That is a CRM and a landing platform for microfinance companies, uh, NBFCs, and small banks. Okay. So we have cool stuff like Aadhaar and going on stuff. And yeah, so uh, we use Ember heavily for our client-side applications. And so uh, I'm going to tell you about using Ember to build a real ambitious application. Yeah. Okay. So what is this? If you go to the Ember, Ember.js website, it will tell you that it's a framework for building ambitious applications. What is ambitious? Okay. So you want to learn any new framework, new MVC framework, you Google, you always come across this site, todomvc.com. But I'm sure it doesn't get you any far than just explaining what is views, routers, controllers, etc. Okay. But let's look at some of the applications that are built using Ember. So it's Zendesk, Travis CI, Discourse, Heroku, Heroku Dashboard, Wine. And they're all huge, massive client-side applications. So all the crying about, oh, client-side single-page applications don't work for public-facing websites, that's not true. Let's see how we can try to build something similar. OK. So let's try an intermediate example. So what gives us the credibility to do this talk? So our platform has, just on the client side, just on the Ember side of things, our has all these numbers, so many files, so many routes, so many adapters. OK. And we have like five big applications which are wired together, and they run as one application. OK. So oh, what are the important elements if you want to build a big massive application? So one is modules. And then second is you need to have real data. You can use mock-up data, you can use client-side JSON files, but it will only get you so far. And the third is you need to have custom views. Because you will have components which are repeated everywhere, you need to build components which you can reuse with minimal, minimal amount of coding. And for this, obviously, testing. And you need testing by, which, uh, by what I mean. So let's do a demo first. So there's a disclaimer, it might be not safe for work because we are using 9GAC to build this demo. So let's go to the demo. Okay. So what we have done is, it looks like a simple, like a fairly simple demo. Uh, so what I have done is, so last night I used 9GAC API, pulled some data, so about 100 posts. I don't know what are all there in the post. And I'm showing some of them, this, uh, the top 10 of the trending posts here. And I have a search feature which will do a Lucene search, that is a full text search. Okay. So let's see. If I go here, it shows me some picture, it shows me some picture. It's like the usual ones. Then I do, oh, it, okay. I do Batman, it gives me something. And I do, I don't know. oh, something. Maybe I will do Apple. Okay, so I'm getting, uh, so th all these data, they are not local. They are in a live database. Uh, not in a live database, they are in my local host database. But this application can go into production right now without, with minimal effort. I can just say Ember build and it, it can be like pushed to Amazon or whatever. Okay, so how do I go about it? So, uh, so this thing Ember CLI. Uh, Abhimanyu uh, already gave a great talk about Ember in the morning, and he explained really well what Ember is, Ember data is, why it's useful. So this is one step ahead of that. So Ember CLI uh, is the best thing that has ever come, that has ever happened to Ember since 
ember, ember data, ember runtime, ember metal. There are so many things, but it has combined all of those nice things, and it's a utility. It has ember and ember data internally. Okay, so let's look at some of the features that we already know as JavaScript developers. No, that they are not necessarily related to Ember. So assets compilation, this term might be familiar to people who are coming from the Rails background. So it's basically what your grunt or gulp or all these things do. So every JavaScript project you have to do minification, concatenation, um, what else? Uh, so you, then you might be using uh, libraries like CoffeeScript, Handlebars, Less, SAS, Stylus, so you have grunt tasks to run all of them. And then you have tests which you, again, which are part of the grunt tasks. But what, Ember CLI has all of this out of the box. You just need to import them and just say run, or whatever the command is. And it will do all of that for you in the minimum amount of time. Then modules. Uh, so Ember CLI internally uses something called as ES6 module transpiler. It's an open source project built by Square Payments. And the good thing about this is you don't need to use require or AMD. It's not that uh, these things are bad, but it's following the same syntax that is specified by ES6. So tomorrow when browsers implement ES6 features, you just have to remove this library and everything will work as it is. So you can just say import controller name, export controller name, that's all. And you can write your code for each separate sections, you can write them in separate files. They will all be modules. And Ember is already uh, very heavily convention over configuration. So in the router file, when you say, okay, go to this route, go to this control, uh, go to this route, it knows which resource to pick, it knows which controller to go, it knows which model to pick up. So Ember has already these features and ES6 module transfer gives you the ability to write all these components in separate files. and all the wiring will be done by Ember CLI. You don't have to do, worry about the wiring. So as a developer, you would want that all your code is separate and it is in modules, which this gives you. Okay. And so another thing about modules is you always have a case where you have built some feature, say suppose, uh, say suppose like I showed you the search box and you have three, four, uh, three, four projects going on, three, four applications going on, and you want that component to be shared by all of them. So what's the thing you do? You just copy that code to each of your projects. And if you make change in one, you have to, change make, you have to make the changes in all of them, right? So, or else you like push it to GitHub and you bower it and you can, use it, you can still use it. But the easier way here is Ember CLI gives you the ability to create application, like all these applications and add-ons as separate Ember projects. So I just say Ember new app one, it creates a new Ember project. I say Ember new app two, it creates a new project. I say Ember add-ons components, it gives me a new Ember project. And I can say, okay, app one needs some component, app two needs some adapters by specifying just in the package.json. I have to just give that relative path and these projects will take the components that are necessary from the add-ons project. And you have to understand that all of these are separate Ember projects, they can run independently. So you can test them independently, you can build them independently, but when you're but when you're building the first project, you'll get whatever is dependent built into the first project. And when you build the second project, whatever is dependent on the second project from the add-ons module, that will get built. So development is independent of the add-ons. Like when you build them, the add-ons things won't be built again. Because they are already tested and running independently, you don't have to worry about them. But when you're building for production, you will get whatever you need exactly as it should be. Okay, so let's go back to our demo and see how this is done using Ember CLI. So uh, this was the code that I, uh, it's a simple node script which used 9 gags API and pull data and what I did was I just pushed all of those to CouchDB. Okay, so let's go and see how it looks in CouchDB. So CouchDB, uh, if you're not aware, CouchDB is a document store database and it's pure JSON. It's not like BSON or, or what else, I don't know. Uh, it's pure JavaScript, uh, it's pure JSON and it has HTTP APIs. You can call this document directly by calling, um, by 
doing curl get of this id so okay so if i just give this I, if i do just a get on get on this you are already getting it on the browser you can get it on the command line or in any program okay so i pushed each post as a separate document in couchdb okay and couchdb has something called as design documents so what design documents will give me is i can have views and i can have separate functions to do my full text search so i'm using something called as couchdb lucene which allows me to do the uh, full text search without having to worry about the coding of it and views will give me aggregate of i can write some conditions which will run through all the documents it will do a map reduce and it will give me a set of documents that i'm interested in so right now i'm saying uh so right now i'm saying uh, saying by words uh, get me all the documents and sorted by not sorted by but i'm saying i'm calling a view which tells me give me all the documents uh, which are by words so i'm getting these documents this is document 1 this is document 2 document 3 and i want to show this data in my ember application uh, so like abhi when you showed you in the morning ember wants data which is uh, okay welcome to that <laughs> so this is this is basically all the data in couchdb uh, so this is what i was talking about so uh, this is the data that we have we have one doc this is one document not the entire result of the view this one document it has an id caption something and it has an images array it will tell me okay this is the normal image this is a large image and it will give me a link and words and this this is a hugely nested not that huge but it's a nested json document so uh, this is a document that i have uh, just focus on the images array and this is the array that ember expects uh, till before ember beta 10 ember data beta 10 uh, what it it was expecting all the ids in the parent document and just the document separately again side loaded so this is called a side loaded json it wanted an id for each of the nested documents but now with ember uh, data beta 10 it suppose embedded json also but still it needs an id so how do we get from here to here okay and the thing about ember is because it's convention based you don't you shouldn't fight it if you fight it it will, it will give you more pain okay so what do we do about it then so the answer is you have to write your own custom adapters okay so you once write the adapter and i'll show you just how the adapter is done uh so one thing you might not have noticed we are not having a backend language anywhere we are not having node or java or ruby or whatever on the backend we are directly pulling from the database uh, we are doing this same in our application we are just having a node backend for security purpose we authenticate each url and then we forward the request to couchdb and whatever couchdb gives back we just use it as it is okay so so ember so the default rest adapter that ember has that doesn't support that won't understand this result that the view is giving us the hugely nested json document so what we do is in my post uh, in my controller i am saying whenever i do a query go i'm specifying some parameters some path parameters some query parameters that couchdb is accepting Couch, couchdb is saying if you go back to this if you look at this url it's saying underscore view uh, sorry underscore design slash list underscore view by words so all these parameters that whatever couchdb expects that we specify in this component uh, in this controller and then we say okay find uh, do a store dot find instead of saying just post i say i am giving it a different name i am calling it as post lucy or whatever and that is some adapter uh, so if i just look at that so 
So just the post one, it's saying it's not extending the REST adapter, the default REST adapter, it's extending a data adapter. And post Lucy, it's extending a Lucy adapter. Lucy, I'm, we are calling it for the Lucene adapter. So now whenever I use these models in my application, they will be following these adapters. So someone asked the question in the morning, what will happen if I'm having two or three different services? So it's easy, you have to just create different adapters, but just specifying this won't work, you have to actually define what the adapters will do. So let's take a look at what the adapter is. So the adapter is extending the REST adapter as it is, but it is just overriding a few functions that we need. So, uh, so if you remember from Abhimanyu's talk in the morning, adapter looks for the URL and ser serializer transforms your JSON string into Ember, Ember model format. Okay. So my data adapter is extending the REST adapter and I'm saying override the build URL. So whatever parameters I passed in my controller, those parameters I'm constructing the URL. Okay. So I'm saying if it is just an ID, if I'm saying store.find post comma ID, then it will be this URL because it is couchdb slash document ID. But, but if it is a view, view is a map ready output, then it will require a design document URL. So I'm getting that from the first line or if it's just an ID, this thing, or else, uh, so we are overriding all, we are doing the minimum modifications to all the default functions. So how that, uh, so this is the build URL, but for every CRUD operation function that you can do, you can do find, create, record, update, delete. We are doing all the minimum modifications that are required and the output you get So I'm calling this URL. So when I do a refresh, it's going to the post, uh, post route and it says that it has to fetch the post model which is extending the data adapter. So this URL is constructed instead of just the, if the rest, the rest adapter would have called um, the local host slash JS foo slash directly the document ID. But here it's constructing this entire document uh, URL and then I get, my res get back my response. So this is my response. Now it's a, and the serial level takes care of converting the JSON string into my Ember model format. So let's take a look at the serializer ones. So what the serializer will do is, it will do the same thing. It will just do the minimum modification that we need to do on the default functions. So it has something called as extract uh, find query. I'm going through, so if I look at the JSON again, I'm just interested in the rows, not the entire document. I'm just interested in this arrays. And I need IDs in each of my nested JSONs. So what I will do here is, I'll go through all of them here. And for each of them, each of the rows, I'm saying get me just the row dot doc, and I'm calling an add ID function to that. And in the add ID function, I will look at the parent. If the parent has an ID, I'll pick that ID, add some count to it, and then return the document. So however deep nesting I have, I will always have a unique ID and then my Ember will be happy. Okay. So let's go back to the demo. So this was the default view. There's no search in this, but when I do a search again, um, I don't know what to So I'm doing this search. This time, it's calling a slightly different URL. Earlier it was called as underscore design something underscore list um, un underscore view because I, wa I was interested in the view output. But this time I'm interested in the, because I'm doing a search, I want, I'm interested in the Lucene output, the CouchDB Lucene output. And the CouchDB Lucene output looks like this. Okay, you can look at the URL, it's slightly different from the URL. But now I'm having a separate adapter for Lucene. So when I'm, um, doing the search, it's, it, it's doing a store.find on the model, which is extending the Lucy, uh, Lucy adapter. That's what I'm calling it. And I get a response in a similar way. And the, uh, I just have to create these adapters and serializers once, and then I need to for forget about them, whether it's coming from Lucene or whether it's coming from a view. 
and I should just keep on writing my Ember code as it is. Okay. And so uh, one more thing I mentioned about custom views in a massive application. So Ember has uh, Ember has a very nice feature called as components. Angular is, uh, has directives, I guess. So components we are already using a library that is called as Twitter, uh, Twitter type ahead. It's available, but you can't use it directly because it has to be Emberified. You, you need to be, you need to have it as a component so that you can just use it anywhere as you want. In that one component, you should just give the input and it would give you the output and you can pass it like a regular Ember function. So what we did was, so this is the component class. Um, we specify what class names it should have, what are the default values, and whenever some action happens on it, this portion did, did insert element. This portion is the uh, default code that the Twitter type ahead expects. It's the default jQuery input output that it expects. I just I'm just monitoring for this when content changes. Uh, if someone else changes the content, then it should load again. I'm observing it all the time, and then I say. Uh, when uh, it's selected, just send an action and the component will get it back. So I should just go back here. If you look at this part, this is all I need to do. Once I have the component ready, so it has a lot of parameters, um, it's, uh, but it's all, most of the time it's always the same. It has class names and the placeholders. But apart from that, the content, you can see that it's the, it has content called a search results and the query, what I type, that is a query. So every time I enter a key, uh, the action in the component is triggered. It will do all that the Twitter type library expects it to do. And it, uh, but because it's extending a model that is, uh, sorry, it is working on a model that is extending the Lucene adapter, it will do a backend call. It will do a backend call. It will uh, do a Lucene search on CouchDB and then get the results. And it will be, the search results will be populated over here. And then everything is just like a normal table, nothing else. Okay. And testing. So this is we for the last two days we have heard it many times. Heard many times that how unit testing is important. So I'm not going to repeat on that, but. Uh, so Ember CLI already has a testing framework, uh, so it has a QUnit version of itself, it's called as Ember QUnit. Uh, you don't need to worry about how to configure those tests, where to write it. It already gives you a uh, folder. I'll just quickly show you. So these are, uh, these are the three uh, mod modules that I have, data, app, and add-ons. App and add-ons were just created by saying Ember new, it's a command line, uh, Ember CLS a command line, you can just say Ember new app one add-ons, and all of these got created, and app again has something called as test already inside it. In, in the uh, unit folder, you just need to write your test cases, and when you run them, you'll know whether all of them are passing or not. So that's it. Any questions? Uh, I have uploaded this entire demo in GitHub. You can download it. Uh, the adapters and serializers which I showed you was just a part of the entire thing that we are using in our company. We are looking to open source it. Uh, if you are interested, you should get in touch. We, will, we can help you.